when he turned his back from shoulder to shoulder it looked like as wide as the tailgate of a truck and this darkness literal darkness just came like all over just just all over me except where i was standing this thing let out the most blood curdling mind blowing spine tingling scream that you've ever heard in your life and it cut through me like a knife and I knew that they were going to take me. I just knew it. And then the next thing I can remember is being levitated. Well, when I look in there, uh, I see two big eyes staring back at me. Hello and welcome. You're listening to The Bump Podcast, a place for the believers of the unexplained, monsters, and paranormal. Join us, and we'll go face-to-face -face with what goes bump in the night. Hey there, believers. I got a very exciting episode for you today. Um, this week, I'm bringing on Lindsay. Um, I honestly, I had for it had slipped my mind our, our conversation. So I went back through. Um, I got on Facebook and looked looked through some some pages that I follow, and sure enough, Lindsay and I had had a short conversation on uh, the Blurry Creatures fan page. And she was talking about deliverance and, uh, you know, demonic activity in life. And I had reached out to her about sharing her experience. And she had replied that she would. And, uh, you know, it's been a couple of weeks and I've had, I've had a lot go on these last couple of weeks in my mind. You know, couldn't keep up. There are things going on. Um, but tonight's tonight. Uh, we've agreed to. She's agreed to come on the show with me and discuss, you know, her personal experiences and her personal journey in life through faith. And uh, it's going to be a good show. It's going to be a fantastic show. Um, looking back at our you know, at her her posts and stuff, uh, what had gone on. This is a very important show. I hope everybody listens to it. I hope everybody likes it. Um. And please continue to uh, get those numbers going on YouTube, on uh, TikTok. We're almost at a thousand on TikTok. I'm almost at. Uh, I'm, I'm close to eight fifty right now. I think on on YouTube. Hopefully by the time this airs, I'll be at a thousand. You know that's like the magic number. It seems like for social media. So uh, let's let's get those numbers up. Instagram's looking good. Uh, Facebook's looking good. But uh, I would love to see, you know, everybody just sign up at least on, on YouTube and TikTok. Even if you don't watch it, I, just let's get the numbers up. <laughs> All right. Um, we're we're going to wait on Lindsay to show up here. Um, in the meantime, I just want to uh, wish everybody a very Merry Christmas. And uh, here she is now. We'll, I'll, we'll get into Christmas here in a minute. Go ahead and bring her on. All right. Well, thank you for having me on the show. My name is Lindsay Pratt, and uh, I had a recent experience with, um, with spiritual warfare that I wanted to share. And I want to preface this by saying that I am just a believer. I'm not an expert in the Bible or anything like that. So everything that I share on this show, I encourage you to look into further yourself in reference, especially against your Bible. But uh, I wanted to share because I feel like a lot of people can relate to this. And uh, I know this is a paranormal podcast, but I feel like the world of the paranormal really overlaps a lot with spiritual warfare. And learning about spiritual warfare has really um, helped me understand the paranormal. Um, my husband and I actually bonded over a common interest in the paranormal. We've listened to a lot of these 
podcasts that talk about, you know, cryptids and, you know, just weird things that people have seen over the years. Um, I've only had a couple prior experiences myself and they were pretty vague. I, I'll go over them briefly, but um, they're not as interesting as a lot of other people's stories that you'll hear on this podcast. Uh, so I'm not going to go deep into them. I'll mostly be sharing uh, what happened to me recently, uh, which involved the casting out of a demon. Um, just as a little bit of background, uh, as my occupation, I'm a part-time horse trainer, part-time graphic designer. I am currently living in North Idaho, but I have lived in a few different states in my life. Um, I was raised kind of in and out of the church, not a really strong Christian upbringing. Um, you know, my mom, my parents were kind of seeking, but not finding, if you will, in the church. So, you know, I know, I knew who Jesus was and, um, I, uh, accepted that God was real and I wasn't really in the church a lot. I didn't really have a deeper relationship with God throughout my childhood or even through college. I was someone who was seeking but not finding. I was really, really a mixed bag. And after college, I, I did wander away from God from, for quite a while in my life. And uh, let me tell you, it would have been a lot easier if I'd been walking with him the whole time, but I was not. So um, when my husband and I got married a few years ago, he was really instrumental in bringing me back into the faith. and. Um, I have been back there. I, I got rebaptized uh, actually just last year. Okay. And um, I've been someone who knew that God was real. And I've had a few experiences where um, I knew he was working in my life, a few big moments. But on a daily basis, I was not someone who felt the Holy Spirit all the time. And I didn't really know where that came from until I had this experience. To go a little more into my family background, especially on my mom's side, my family has had a lot of mental illness. Uh, we had a couple of, <laughs> sorry, that's my cat. Oh, no, um, <laughs> we had uh, a couple violent suicides in my family that happened when I was younger. We also had uh, an infant die where we didn't really get a lot of answers afterwards. So, so some, some darkness. Um, my parents really did a good job of keeping my childhood bright. I had, I had a good childhood. I really did. Um, but there was always that lingering in the background. And that was something that I really wondered a lot about through the years. I was always kind of seeking answers as to what is mental illness and what what are the answers to that i know there's there's a lot of different approaches with therapies and medication and a lot of different theories on really what that is physiologically right. but it was something i always wanted more answers on and that's what led me to look into deliverance lately and just a few months ago um i bought a book that was recommended online. I actually don't remember exactly where I heard about it from, but it was called The Secrets of Deliverance by Alexander Pagani. And it looks like this. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I started reading and honestly, I wasn't buying all of it at first. It seemed a little bit too simple, but um, I was willing to keep going. And just in the first part of the book, there was some instruction on how to specifically pray for deliverance and how to recognize where demonic influence could come into your life. And I was reading this book one night before bed and I, I just went to God and I prayed one of the prayers that was in the beginning of the book. And I prayed it as I thought it might relate to my life. I prayed over it a couple specific areas. And I asked God to reveal um, any, air, any secret rooms in my body where demons might be hiding. Oh, wow. And then I fell asleep. And I had the most realistic dream 
that I've ever had in my life. And it really didn't feel much like a dream. It felt very alive and very different. And um, in this dream, I was, I was in a house that I recognized as a house that I used to live in in college. Even though it didn't look exactly like that, that's what I recognized it to be. And I was there with my mother and the house was mostly empty. We were, it was like we were moving out. We were moving out the last boxes. We were sweeping, we were cleaning like you do as you move out of a house. And while we were doing this, there was an increased sense of urgency because I could feel evil spirits around. I knew there were demons there. I could feel them whispering in different rooms, never in the same room we were in, but I was very aware that they were there. And I just kept saying, we have to hurry, we have to hurry, we have to get out of here. This isn't a good place to be. And we were grabbing the last two things to go out the door and lock up the house. And I turned to grab the box on the floor and I heard the door slam. And I turned around and my mom had ran out and I ran up the front door after her. And I said, why would you leave me in here? Why would you do that? You know what's around here. And she turned around. And she looked at me and there was, there was a demon in her. Mm. I could tell immediately. And um, I just started screaming the name of Jesus Christ. And I did that several times and I felt something grab me by the throat and I could no longer speak anymore, but I was screaming Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ over and over again in my head. And then I woke up and, you know, I was in a false sweat. I was in shakes. I was like, you know, what the heck just happened? Yeah. And I was fearful right after the dream, but I have to go into what happened right after that because I've always been someone in church who want to be close to God, but I couldn't say that I was. And since that experience, I've never felt the Holy Spirit more strongly in my life. For the past couple years, I've been in a practice of reading my Bible every day, but it's something that I did because I knew I was supposed to. It wasn't something that I really longed for. And from the very first day after that dream, I opened the book and it's like reading a whole different book. The word is very much alive. And like I've, I stay up late reading the Bible now. It's incredible. There is such deeper meaning and I come out of it asking questions and then I pray and I receive answers to those questions. And it's, it's really, really incredible. And um, I just, I feel that a lot of people can relate to that because I know I'm not alone. I'm not the only one who would sit in church and wonder if something was wrong with them because they didn't feel a closeness to the Lord, even though they, they believed in the Lord. So <laughs> I wanted to share that. And um, if you don't mind, I'll go into, I did take a couple notes on some things from this book that um, kind of explain a little bit of what deliverance, ministry and deliverance, self-deliverance is about, because this isn't really something that we hear talked about in many churches. At least I haven't really heard it talked about in depth in any church I've been to. And I think... People are scared of it because let's face it, demons are scary. I've had kind of just a fear of demons my whole life. Like I watched one movie, it was the, it was the Exorcism of Emily Rose when I was like 13 years old. Yeah. And right after that, I there was like a week where I would wake up at 3 a.m. every night and I was like, uh-uh, like no more, can't touch that stuff. Like just absolutely wouldn't go there and what I recognize now is that fear is a tool of spiritual warfare that's a tool 
of the enemy because they don't want you to look closer because then you might find out how to remove them from your life. You know and what? something, <laughs> go I, ahead. I feel like you're, you're dead on with that. You know, um, all my life, uh, I always say I'm not afraid of anything in this natural world. You know, I've, uh-huh. I've been around black bears, uh, you know, just whatever scary thing out there. I never worried about it except for demons all yes. my life. Um, mm-hmm. my, my dad's side of the family is Catholic. And when I was a little boy, my grandmother was watching a live exorcism on TV um, on like 60 minutes or something. I was like eight or nine years old, you know, and I remember watching that and I, I got freaked out. And then when I was a teenager, we watched The Exorcist. No, um, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, so I, I'm right there with you. Yeah, uh, that that was the only thing scary to me. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I, I think you're right. It's it's the enemy knowing that. I, I feel like at this stage of my life, you know, I'm in my 40s now and I'm, I'm closer to God than I've ever been. That fear is gone. And now I have a, yes. like a fire to for deliverance. I, I, I have that passion that I want to I want to see him gone. You know, I want to watch the dominion yes. of the devil shrink. And uh-huh. I feel like you, you're probably in the same exact boat. To where yes. they knew <laughs> I'm right there. They knew where we were going to be. And they were trying to get us at a young age to not get to where we're at now. You know what I'm saying? Yes, absolutely. Um, so yeah, yeah, they they use that fear so that we won't look closer. Yeah. And uh, most of the churches aren't looking closer either, unfortunately. Right. And I think it's something that's really missing from church because you know, if you read your Bible, there are instances where it talks about uh, demons and, you know, in the Old Testament, a lot of talk about the Nephilim giants and everything. And that's, uh, demons are the the disembodied spirits of the Nephilim. Um, If your listeners don't know (laughs) what I'm talking about, you might want to look into Dr. Heiser and Dr. Laura Sanger, there's a lot of good information there that's really helped me understand. But um, we don't hear about demons today. I mean, you might hear of a case or two of, oh, you know, I think this person was possessed. But people think of demons as manifestations where I think, I mean, Satan's just gotten sneakier and sneakier over the years. And I think way more people than we think have demonic attachments. I mean, I'm just, I'm just a normal girl. I haven't done uh, (laughs) that much bad stuff in my life, not to other people anywhere. I mean, you know, I partied in college and actually I think this is um, where a lot of this attachment came from, but it was just normal stuff that's very accepted by society these days. So it's, it's just not common knowledge how easy it is to let these things into your life and how they can really go undetected for a long time. And they can use, you know, more subtle warfare, like just keeping you far from God or keeping you fearful or keeping you from looking deeper into your faith. Whereas people think of, you know, demons manifesting and people writhing on the floor and speaking in tongues where it's really not always like that right so it's really interesting yeah this book it um to go into it a little bit it maps out your body like the temple of god which is uh described in in detail in ezekiel i think it goes on for like eight chapters about the the specific layout of the temple of god um and it references um first corinthians six nineteen says or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you whom you have from God? So it's telling us that our bodies, God built them like his temple. So, and there are there were lots and lots of rooms in this temple. And it talks about how the demons can live in the secret rooms behind walls that you don't know are there. Hmm. And it teaches you how to recognize uh, where they came from and systematically how to move them. I, I did write down a few more quotes here. Um, 
Well, first of all, it says if we if we ask God to show us which rooms have become areas of demonic habitation, he will. And that's what I did just very simply without even having a total belief in what this book was saying yet, because I really wasn't that far into it. That's what I did. And that's what brought on my experience. And it also says that demons are legalists. They must honor the legalities of the courtroom of heaven. They can only carry out their functions when humans violate the established edicts of heaven on earth. Yes. Which, I mean, we do that all the time through sin, through sins that we don't really think are that bad, but they still open doors to the demonic. Yes. And it uh, talks about four steps to purging the rooms. And the first step is to recognize uh, allow God to turn on the lights in dark rooms. And this is really, this is looking at yourself and what you've done and what's been done to you and how you may have opened those doors to demons. And the second step is to repudiate, to refuse to have anything to do with them or to reject them as unauthorized. And this is important. You have to do this verbally. The Bible says, uh, life and death are in the power of our tongues, not in the power of our thoughts. Amen. So verbal prayer is uh, very important. Uh, the third step is to remove them. You command them to leave verbally in the name of Jesus Christ. There's a lot of power in the name of Jesus Christ. And if, like me, you find that your voice no longer works, just keep screaming it inside your head and it does work. Okay. And the last step, which is really important is to restore and when you remove a demon you can't leave and you have to fill the Holy Spirit I've been trying to do this a long time this happened automatically for me but if you have to ask the Holy Spirit into your life uh, Luke 11 says uh, go ahead I hate to interrupt you on the, on the fourth step right after restore it started mm -hmm. breaking up on me uh, real, oh. real, real bad. So could you just repeat after restore? Because yeah. I don't want anybody to miss this. Yeah. So sorry, you have to fill that empty space with Holy Spirit. And that's something that I had been asking the Holy Spirit to come into my life for a while and not really feeling an answer to that prayer. So I feel like after casting out the demon, that really came in to my life right away but that's something that you have to make sure that you do you have to ask the holy spirit to fill the space amen and um luke 11 says uh when the unclean spirit has gone out of a person it passes through waterless places seeking rest and finding none it says i will return to my house from which i came and when it comes it finds the house swept and put in order then it goes and brings seven sp other spirits more mm -hmm. evil than itself and they enter as well there. And the last state of that person is worse than the first. Yes. So the last step is extremely important. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, and you know, it's yeah, like, so, I, I don't know how often your internet's bad, uh, but my Zoom sessions tend to not get very interrupted unless I'm talking about something like this. I've heard that from other people before, yeah. Yeah, I've yeah, had a no. lot of uh, EVPs come through. Um, I've had voices come in that seem like it mocked me. Like it would repeat what I said, but way slower. And it, I've had a lot of stuff happen. Um, but I've been doing this for about two and a half years. Um, so let, even if we get interrupted, let's not stop, okay? Let's just make sure we... Okay. 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 Well, yeah, if I need to repeat something, I will. Okay. Um, just let me know. Okay, I appreciate it. But yeah, and I just have one more quote that I jotted down from this book. And I'm mm -hmm. sure there's other good books out there on this stuff, but this one really helped me. And these were kind of the key points. Uh, Pagani says, please hear me. I'm talking about prayers that are specific and detailed. Standing in front of a door, yelling out generic prayers, hoping demons inside will leave, won't get you far. No, we must stand before these rooms and use the keys of the kingdom to open the door, go inside and cleanse the room. With our authority in Christ, we can command the demons to leave, and they have to obey. So for me, that was just, well, for one, asking God to reveal where they might be really got me far. If you're not getting very far on your own, 
but it's also just taking a hard look at yourself and things that you may have accepted as, you know, everybody does this, um, but really the Bible says it's a sin. That's something that you have to look at and repent for. And I mean, really repenting is just recognizing that it was sin and turning away. It doesn't have to be some huge, you know, depression and, you know, I'm such an awful person, but you do have to look at it and recognize it. That was, but, that, that, that's ahead. wonderful. I, I, I don't want to pry, but um, I've, during this dream, did you recognize like when you woke up, like, oh, this, it was because of X, Y, Z that this occupation happened? Like, were you able to recognize yes. like the source? Yes. And to be honest with you, I'm not sure if it was one demon or many because I was hearing multiple around where it was. Right. And I'm glad you said that because I did skip over a part of the dream, not on purpose. But when it appeared in my, in my mom, it spoke to me and it said, we live in the wilderness of this university. And it took me about a week to realize what that meant. And I really think it was just referring to a time in my college years. Cause again, I was, the dream took place in a house that I lived in, in college. Yeah. And I think it was just talking about the partying and, you know, that's when I lost my virginity, which I'm not proud of and just sexual sin that we, we accept as being very normal in today's society really let something in wow Wow. Wow. yeah yeah i i've spoken to uh are are you familiar with dark waters do you know who that is yes okay me and dw have talked off the air um several times and he he helped me um i've been going through spiritual warfare forever but it got it got way worse this year um because my wife and I you know we rededicated ourselves to church and uh I I gave up this podcast as an altar to God you know I there, there's no backing up you know I, we're right we're all That's in wonderful. we're all in for God and uh you know the attacks started really ramping up um to where the, the point where I had to out of my physical home I had to cast things out and uh I actually had one of my family members move out and I, I think I was a big part of uh, what was what was going on um but yeah you know, when we were talking he would tell me things that would help uh, as far as specific prayers like you're talking about here um and he helped under help me to understand you you can you can have an occupation you know they can be there within you without possessing you it's a big difference between being possessed and having an oppression or an occupation uh-huh. and uh you know he he was telling me things you know helping me with specific prayers and i would do these things and i would have physical reactions to these things leaving um wow now, yeah it, it it's really intense uh it's really intense like dry heaving and stuff um and that wow and th- there's th- there's no other way for it to be related and it was kind of spot on you know i would call him back and i'd be like hey man this 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 and happened and he's like yeah when i when it happened to me i was you know he was throwing up blood and i was like well i didn't get that bad you know what i mean but, uh-huh. but yeah it's uh it's it's crazy but we sound crazy talking about it yeah but, but yeah it's, it's absolute reality <laughs> you know what i mean I, i'm okay looking crazy at this point you know Oh, me too. I've got plenty more crazy stuff to say because my life's been a little while since since this dream happened. So. Yes, but well, yeah, I want to hear all about it. Anything that, you, even if you think it's kind of mundane, it's not. Okay, okay. because the average person isn't going to get into, they're not going to realize this. So I want to hear anything you want to share. I'm open. Well, <sighs> since this was removed and I started feeling filled with the Holy Spirit and a lot closer to God, man, He didn't waste any time with putting some pretty big information in front of me and what happened right away 
is, you know, I've been looking into a lot of this, you know, paranormal, supernatural stuff, you know, some stuff to do with Christianity, a lot of this stuff for years. And it's something that I just do while I'm working because I'm a graphic designer and I'll play YouTube and podcasts while I do my work. Right. Something that got put right in front of my face right after this happened was a lot of stuff about eschatology and the end times. And yeah, we're going to get a little wild. Um, the very first thing that got put in front of me was uh, a video about the possible I identity of the Antichrist, which I know a lot of people <laughs> are going to write off as, you know, how could you possibly know that? And, you know, I might not. This guy might be totally off base, but this was a video that went into pretty much everything the Bible says about the identity of the Antichrist and the only person alive that fulfills all of those roles right now. And I'll go ahead and say that's King Charles. And I'll send you a link to the video if, um, if you want to hear more about that. But man, that got me asking a whole lot of questions in prayer. And, you know, as far as looking into supernatural stuff we've my husband and I have been looking for years and it's kind of stuff that you never really think you're going to get answers on and maybe you get something you think is an answer every once in a while well answers started coming a lot quicker on on this stuff and it just seemed like the Holy Spirit was really using the the algorithm and just every every source of media that I was putting in front of myself to give me more stuff, more more information. And um, I'm not gonna go deep into any of this stuff because I'm not the best person to teach on it, but it's really helped me connect a lot of dots into the fact that the end times are a lot closer than I wanted to believe before. And my husband was ahead of me on this. He's kind of been saying this for a lot of years. And I was like, yeah, no, I think it's maybe it's maybe it's a little further off. I'm not a huge conspiracy <laughs> person, or I wasn't before this. But um, just to give a rundown, some things you might want to look into if you're curious about this is the Antichrist video, which I'll send you a link to. Um, Jews returning to Israel. Uh, life has been found near the Dead Sea again. Mm -hmm. uh, Israel, which was for a long time a desert, is now very high in production of milk and honey, which is direct biblical prophecy. Um, the Euphrates drying up. Uh, natural disasters in the last 50 years have increased tenfold. Uh, people are seeing more and more UFOs and supernatural creatures in recent years. Um, there's an asteroid called Apophos that is possibly a fulfillment of the Wormwood prophecy. Um, the last nation on earth to receive the word of God happened in 2018 by a missionary who was killed. Uh, you got to look at the state of the world wars, particularly Russia. We have to look at... Uh, digital currency and cashless society approaching, as well as the new uh, Ten Commandments of Climate, uh, the, the Interfaith uh, yeah. Climate Accords. Uh, the, we have to look at the New World Order approaching and how that relates to paganism. And, oh, the, the red heifers are in Israel now. They're keeping a close eye on those. There's steps being taken towards the Third Temple building. And of course, um, just the fact that Israel became a nation again in 1948, beginning the fig tree generation. Um, Matthew 24, 34 says, and this generation shall not pass away until all these things take place. And that generation is not young. All right. So, of course, we, we will not know the day of the Lord's coming, but we do get to know the season. And the signs are there. <laughs> wow. There's a lot of arguments as to where we are in this process, but just for anyone out there who isn't aware of this stuff, just go ahead and take a look. <laughs>
I, you dropped a lot of words there that yeah I did I know that, that, that's, that's good that, that's good <laughs> I, I'm with you I've, I've heard and I follow to an extent at least each one of these things mm -hmm. I've, I've been into uh I've been a crazy conspiracy theorist for like I don't know, 15 years now since I was still in the air force you know my eyes got opened and I was like whoa so yeah I'm with you but okay. uh uh, I I can't wait for the emails to come in because I got a lot of oh, I got yeah. a lot of Christians that listen to the show, <laughs> as well as a lot of uh, conspiracy theorists, critical thinkers. Uh, you know, you can wear multiple hats. You know what I mean? Um, yes. So yes. Uh, even if some of them are tin foil, <laughs> we, yeah. we we wear them. Uh huh. Yeah, and I'm right with you there because you know I've been someone who's kind of tried to stand on the fence between you know, what we're told in the mainstream media and conspiracy theories. Yeah. Like I said, my husband's been ahead on, of me on that for years and, you know, he'll show me something and I'll say, yeah, maybe. Um, but since looking at that stuff, I really think that God put that in front of me for a reason to open my eyes. Because yeah. since then, I've been looking more into a lot of things that, that would be called conspiracy theories by most people. And, um, well, actually, there was there's a video that Glenn Beck put out, and I'm not a big follower of him, or at least I wasn't, but he shared a, a prophetic dream that he had recently, wow. and um, I can send you the link on that if you haven't seen it as well. I, I haven't but, seen that. I, I got okay. rid of cable, but yeah, I'd love to see that. <laughs> gotcha. No, it's same, but it was online. Yeah. But uh, he says we must start looking at the news with spiritual eyes. And that's just, that's really what I've started doing yeah. because, um, you know, the, this experience that I shared before with the dream and the casting out of the demon, that was spiritual warfare kind of on a micro level, on an individual level. Right. But something that's really been a common theme in everything that's been put in front of me lately is spiritual warfare on a macro level, what's being done to our society what's been going on for the past well a long time but especially in the past 50 or 60 years yes, and it's helped me really start to see the bigger picture as to why the world is how it is today mm -hmm. and that makes you question pretty much everything that you've been taught in school and by the mainstream media and uh, once that starts happening, it kind of feels like a little bit of your programming starts breaking down. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. When, We're, go ahead. Blinders come off, you know, you, you, can't, <laughs> you can't unsee, you can't unlearn these things, you know. Yeah, uh, you can't look away. <laughs> you know, I, I lost family members, like, as far as, like, regular contact with them uh, right around COVID. Because I'm like, okay, red flags, you know, and I know this is going to mm -hmm. be on YouTube, so I'll probably, th th it might not get a lot of views, but once they started pushing that vaccine, they're like, oh, you get a free cheeseburger. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, something's got to go. Uh, it, I don't know. I, I'm waiting for that connection. I'm, wait, I'm waiting for that to be connected to with uh, Project Blue being coming and tie into this, you know, end time stuff and you know, false, false. Absolutely. I, I'm just waiting for it. And it oh, sucks. Yeah. I know it's coming and nobody, nobody want to listen to you, you know, oh, we'll yeah. wait three years and I'll be right about that too, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's all connected. It's all part of their plan. Yeah. yeah. We are a deceived generation. Um, and Satan is a deceiver. He's a deceiver from the very beginning. It started in the garden of Eden with Eve um yeah <laughs> uh but yeah like like talking about the the luke 11 with the the demons leaving and then trying to come back and uh you know fill with with more evil spirits uh jesus didn't just say this would happen to individuals it, he said so it would be with this generation if referring to the fig tree gen the end times generation and we're absolutely seeing that happen uh you know, the United States was founded as a Christian nation, but our nation has turned away from God. And this happened, you know, 
quite a while ago at this point with, you know, we took him out of schools and we're, we're so distracted these days. We, we make idols out of all kinds of things in our life without even looking into, you know, real paganism, as you would say it. We were just so distracted and that in itself is a weapon of spiritual warfare distraction. Yes. Amen. And, um, other gods have come back in and most people can't see it. Most people don't even believe in other gods. If even if they believe in Yahweh, the one true God, they they don't realize that there are other evil spirits that are very present in our world and working against us. Yes. And um let's see, first Timothy for one says the spirit clearly says that in later times some will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. Mm. And I can see now that that is very much happening in our generation. Sorry about that. Oh, you're good. Um, you're right. It is. Have... Hello. Yeah, I, I just said you're right. It is happening. Can, can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. You okay. just cut out a little bit, but oh, you're sorry. back. <laughs> sorry about that. Yeah. We're seeing a lot of like the new age influencing our society in a huge way. And that's something that I was absolutely guilty of probably a little bit in college and definitely after, because for seven years I was living in Las Vegas. I was a circus performer actually. And that stuff is very present in, uh, in the performing world. And it comes in as, you know, things that people think are very innocent, um, like yoga and Reiki and, you know, all these things that masquerade as love and light and peace, and we can save the world. Um, but we can't, we can't save the world. Uh, <laughs> read your Bible and you'll know, you'll know that and you'll know how this ends only God can restore the world and we can't be deceived by putting the power on ourselves to save this world because only he has that power right. um, the devil disguises himself as an angel of light right. so just because it looks like light doesn't mean it is yeah. um yeah, astrology, tarot, all this stuff. It's just effective enough to make people curious and make them want to delve in further. And the kingdom of darkness will give you treatments to your problems if you give yourself over to them. But they're only treatments. They're never the cure. You're only going to find the cure in Jesus. And if you read Revelation, you'll know how it ends for those related to the kingdom of darkness. So be very careful about dabbling in that stuff. Amen. Amen. <laughs> yeah. I love it. I love it. You're spot on yeah. on, uh, on everything. And I, I'm going to have to get a copy of this book. Um, it's when, a good one. When you posted it on a, it was a Blurry Creatures fan page, I think is what it was. Yep. <laughs> Uh, I'm, I'm trying to get something going with Nate and Luke. I think it's going to be after the holiday, oh. but I'll, I'll either come oh, on here or they'll come on here, one or the other. Yeah. It would be better for me if I could just come on their show. <laughs> but yeah. They have a, a larger platform, but either way, I'll be happy. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I, I saw the book and I think I have it in my Amazon cart, but I'm going to have oh, to really? Yeah. But, you know, my conspiratorial mind, I was like, oh, his last name is Pagani, huh? Sounds like a Italian for <laughs> pagan. I don't know if I want this guy's book. You know? <laughs> oh, I didn't even think about that. But, but you know, it's really helped me. He's been spot on. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, this, is a, this is the best review I've ever heard for a book. I'm going to have to go with <laughs> Well, yeah, I do have to say that this book has been a great tool for me. But uh, I would just encourage people to not be afraid to look into deliverance as a whole because like I said it's just I think it's a really big missing piece from the church these days and from your spiritual life yeah, and um, as far as all the, the crazy ideas I've thrown out there with conspiracies and eschatology and everything um, I would just say that a lot of people are going to recoil at this because of their own cognitive dissonance 
And I would say that that is a huge tool of spiritual warfare that, um, you know, the powers that be have really learned how to use in today's society. We don't realize how brainwashed we are by what we learned in school and what we passively hear on the mainstream media day to day. And uh, it's just, it's way easier to keep believing what you believe and what you've been taught about the world. The, the stuff I'm saying, the stuff I'm looking into, it doesn't make it easier to exist in this world, but it will strengthen your faith nah. for sure. That's it. That's, that's so we have to... Go ahead. You know, I was going to say, that's what it's about. It, it, it all comes down to faith. We have to, we have to lean on that because we can't lean on knowing we have to uh, just lean on faith, you know? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we have to look at why we believe what we believe, and we have to start looking at everything through a spiritual lens, and then, then you'll know, start being able to see, you know, the, the agendas that are out there. Uh, they use that, that cognitive dissonance against you. I mean, what is cognitive dissonance? It's, um, it's contradictory information, and that, and the mental toll of it, but it's psychological stress is what it is. And if someone wanted to keep you programmed to an ideology, that's, that's how they do it, really. Um, you have to look at, you know, who, who wrote the history books? Um, the winners. <laughs> what are their agendas? What, it, what do they want you to believe? What, what is the news focus on and what does it skip over and, and why? You have to start not just taking the information that you're giving, but really looking at it critically and comparing it to your bible really yeah. yeah that's it that's like the the two like foundational steps is question everything you see and hear and take the bible literally <laughs> you know what i mean yes <laughs> yes <laughs> take it so literally and I, I don't just up, read it once yeah right. i grew up thinking that the bible was uh, it the the old testament was a bunch of metaphor and you know it's just it's all just basically, you know, teaching you to be a moral person. You know, that's great. Um, the the New Testament, believe the words in red because that was Jesus. Everything else is kind of just more metaphor. And, you know, and that's what I, uh -huh. as a kid, you know, not, not, not really knowing. That's what that's kind of how I took it because it just seemed so far out sometimes, you know. Uh-huh. Yeah. But, yeah. But it's real, you know, it, it's it's literal there were really giants there those are our demons the whole old testament is a battle of trying to get the, the nephilim clans these giant clans you know the, yes it, it wasn't like god hated people because they were big you know it, it was the, yes the, the, that's it, so it, huge mm -hmm. it's the destruction of the messianic bloodline uh, that's all they wanted yes. to do and so Moses and Caleb and Joshua go out there and they're exterminating these giant clans. And the whole New Testament is the disembodied spirits of those giant clans. <laughs> you know, it's us and demons. And yes, it, just, it, makes a, it makes a clear enemy. You know, if you if you look at it like that, it's a clear enemy from the dawn of time. Um, yes. It's all yeah, everything you just said is so huge. And, you know, like the first time I read the Old Testament prior to all this knowledge about uh, the giants and the demons and the seed war and just the spiritual war that we are all in in general. The first time I read the Old Testament, it just kind of seemed like humans were set up for failure and that God was a really angry guy. Mm -hmm. And it really did not help me in my faith. But going back and reading it with that knowledge, it's completely different. And, you know, maybe God set it up that way so that children can read the Bible and not be scared off and get the general ideas and the morals and everything. And that's wonderful. But we can't keep reading the Bible like babies. We oh have to God. spiritually mature and look at these things deeper because you know, the word is alive. You will get something new out of it every time you read it. Amen. I agree with that 100%. 100%. Yeah. Wow. 
Well, Lindsay, is there anything else you wanted to share? Was there any uh, personal experiences, any anything that you wanted to go into? Um, not really. I mean, I would just say, yeah, really, really look further at spiritual warfare and what that is, you know, on a macro level. And if you can't see it on a macro level yet, look at it on an individual level start with yourself mm -hmm. and you know it's it's really time to get right with the lord a lot of people think that you know they can put this stuff off and eventually they'll they'll have an understanding but um the time is now we're in a spiritual war that is definitely ramping up they're is an overall agenda that that a lot of people are not seeing in in a lot of these you know national issues and with the new age coming in and there, there's a reason the world feels so broken and that the answers are are in this spiritual war and with god and you really have to get into your bible and read it and if if you feel like something is blocking you from that relationship with God and from understanding your Bible, you might have an attachment. Yeah. And that's, it's something that people are, are scared to look at. But um, the fear, the fear is just a, a weapon of the enemy. And the only, the only thing we have to fear is God's wrath. He will help you through anything in your life if you ask him. Amen. That's perfectly said. Perfectly said. And you know, if for the people listening to this, if it seems like every podcast you listen to is talking about spiritual warfare this year or all of a sudden, there's a reason. Right? Yeah. Yeah. The Bible <laughs> says knowledge will be increased in the end. So we're, I mean, we're seeing like a great deception, but we're also seeing people wake up, especially oh, yeah. very recently. I know I'm not the only one. But you know so, what? There's news articles lately. Um, my local news station kept sharing it about how the Christian church is in decline and how Christians will be a minority in the next so many years. Uh -huh. That let me know that there's a, a revival coming. You know, we're in a revival. It, it's the opposite of whatever you see. Yeah. Um, yeah. God's army is rising up and it's on. <laughs> yeah. It's on. Yeah, absolutely. And it's so important to see that because you know, it says that a lot of people will be deceived in the end. So, you know, you, even if you are a Christian, you don't want to be lukewarm. You want to look deeper into this stuff because God has given us so many tools in the Bible to look for what's about to happen. And, um, well, I, I jotted down Matthew 7, 13 through 14 says enter by the narrow gate for the gate is wide and the way is easy that leads to destruction and those who enter by it are, are many for the gate is narrow and the way is hard that leads to life and those who find it are few so we are supposed to look deeper we are we have to be able to recognize the enemy or we will be deceived Amen. Lindsay, thank you so much for doing this. Of course. Uh, thank you so much for coming on the show and and for sharing your story. Uh, I know it's it's not always easy to do that. You know, it's, it's something that's a personal thing for you, but you've had a revelation since then. Uh, you have a, had a revelation through that. And I yeah, appreciate you. Absolutely. It's going to I'm help so other people. I'm so thankful for it. It'll yeah, help I'm others. thankful for, for you and the opportunity to on this podcast because so pretty early on for me this didn't happen that long ago so you know I'm still I'm still looking and I'm still processing but I I do feel that God gave me this experience for a reason and to share it because I'm I know I'm not alone in the way that I was feeling and we are not alone in in this spiritual war so mm -hmm. it's it's important to to share with as many people as we can that that is our job that's it. That's it. Glory to God. <laughs> Glory right, to listen. God. Uh, well, you have a good night. God bless. You too. And uh, tell your husband I said hello and uh, best of luck to both of you guys. All right. All, All right. right. Thank you. God bless. All right. God bless.